Well, here we are with, I think, our third update yep. on, the, on the Visigraph. Yeah. As you can all see, the type bar mounting has been reinstalled in the machine. That wasn't quite as difficult as you might imagine, uh, because, as you saw when it was all out, all of these uh, type bars and that horseshoe-shaped bearing mounting surface, yeah, those all come out together, and so do all these bell cranks that are mounted, and those have to match up with these vertical extensions here by a pin and slot connection. So the trick I used was to oil every single one of the pins, and then I angled the mounting down to match it, fed it down straight, and then applied these two hold-down bolts here, you see. There is a complicated linkage down inside the machine. Oh, there's a good view of it. It has a reach rod that goes straight down that you do have to guide. Yep, it's right in there. Yep. You have to guide between those two centermost type bars that are actually splayed to accommodate it. <laughs> but uh, after it wasn't, it wasn't too bad to get that back on. Uh, well, after after the second time with it not going in easily, I remembered that, that was actually down there. So uh, maybe I should have had one more or one less cup of coffee before I tried that. <laughs> I, I don't know, but. Here's an interesting thing about this typewriter. I'm going to try to get around this side here. And this is, uh, this is not really specific to the Visigraph. This is more uh, typewriters, I don't know, 101 or 301 or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, nobody's getting credit hours for this. So. This is honors. This is right. honors level. Right. This so, is doctorate level stuff. Right. So when you, see it, when you see a typewriter like this and you see a vertical lever sticking up like this that's, that's motivated by the primary key lever, most people that have had a typewriter look this part would say, oh, well, that's, that's probably a bell crank. It's probably actuated by that primary key lever by a pin and slot connection, and so it can, it can rotate. If I, if I look at my hand here and I hold it up here and I make a little bell crank and this is the part that's motivated by the primary key lever and this is that part sticking up that you can see, you can see that if I take the small amount of motion I have at the back of that primary key lever, because don't forget, even though this key top goes, you know, use a real technical term, way far up and down, there's very little motion actually occurring back here. Radially, yes, but distance around the circumference of a circle prescribed, no. Right, right. Well, if I, use a, if I use a bell crank like this, where I take that small amount of motion here and transfer it to that lever, you can see I get a large circumferential distance, right? And so you'd think that that would be what this is, and in fact, the very first patents for the Visigraph are that way, but that's not how this machine's built at all. How about no? These, yeah, how about no? These are actually screwed to the key levers. Oh. Yeah. And so it's certainly, certainly cheaper to build that way. And so let's see if I can get back and see the whole thing in action here. So I push the primary key lever, and that extension, of course, moves forward, and, and in that pin and slot connection, it motivates that bell crank, you can see that. That pulls on the intermediate link and then pulls the type bar to the print point. That's a good view of that of that top linkage there. You would not be able right. to see that with the deck right. on it very well. And one of these days I'm going to show you the uh, patent classifications. That's another idea for a video I have. Uh, this is type bar pulled to print point. This, this would be very difficult to leave much of this the same and convert to a slotted segment. Because you can't pull it from the top. So. And, and it also isn't here. Let me, if you want to back up a little bit, I'll give this the proper motivation and you can smack on that key lever there. And we'll see. It's also not very fast. And I'm really pushing on where the spring is that is the re, the, essentially the return spring. I'm really pushing on that hard. And that's, to use a term, all the faster it returns. <laughs> Yeah, this, so, there, there's nothing about this typewriter that says fast to me. No, but, uh, no, I don't, think, I don't think in mint condition this would have been an especially fast machine. I just don't, I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. Or, or especially accurate or particularly expensive. Or, but, but more of that later. Uh, Maybe check out, let's uh, move over to the carriage. Right, okay. Check out so, the, uh, here's something interesting. We uh, were fiddling around just the other day, and I happened to notice that the end of the uh, shaft on which the tab stops were mounted had a slot in it, so I didn't know if that was, just looking at it, if that was a screw holding it on. Well, it turns out the whole shaft is uh, one piece, 
Let's see if I want to get that in there. There we go. And uh, giant long and it's screw. Just, yeah, it's just turned <laughs> down on the end and threaded with uh, machine screw threads, and uh, just goes into the other end there. And the, and the tab stop slide along. Well, here's something important: <laughs> never beat on your typewriter if it won't work. <laughs> and we have a we, even though Today's there's fact. there's a there's a photo of me hammering uh, I think a Rex Visible with its own platen <laughs> uh, way early in a workshop. Uh, well, site only if absolutely the, necessary when yeah, repairing it, yeah. not not in use. Yeah, you'll see that one of these things is not like the others. This this tab stop is not flat anymore. These these yeah, are very bad. This one this one is not. And that's why the whole tab me mechanism was jammed up, was because some ham-handed individual in the past decided that because that wouldn't move, he would hammer it. Maybe you can pick us, pick that up there, and show us. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. It's so bent. not only did it bend, but that should be straight because of the way it's made. See, there's a split there's in the it. face. It's cracked. I don't know if you're getting that it's, or not. Yeah, it's it's hard to just hold it steady for a sec there. It's just you can not see. Good. The way this is made, uh, there is there is a screw right there. You can see the screw head. Yeah, you can see it. And so they drilled this piece after it was formed, put that screw in. That screw holds the spring, and that's what snaps this tab back into place against that rack when you slide it. Well, of course, you're going to drill through a piece of metal that thin to put in a screw. That's where it cracks. Right, that's right where it cracks. So that's... And this, this that I'm holding, see it right there is a crack right yeah, there. Yeah, this yep. is not especially good metal. It, is, it doesn't feel like steel. It feels more. It seems more like pot metal. Yeah, I mean, it's, seriously, it's not. This is not heavy. So that, no, that I would say that tab design is a is a weakness of this machine. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to uh, straighten that one off, but we may not be able to. It may we're gonna it, it may it break. Up. Yeah, it might break, but it's already broken, and that's. Rule number one at Davis Typewriter Works, if it's already broken, we can't break that's it. That's right, that's right. It's so, already broken, and it, it, we couldn't move any other tab stops yeah, past this it. This thing you is know, not going back so. on the machine like this. Yeah, so. it, it ruins the whole tab mechanism. Right. And, of course, it, the, this bar had rusted like crazy, so Dave had to oil it and file it down so we could even get it out with all the other stops on it. Now, you see I've yeah, got... Yeah, this is, this is before, and this uh, is after. Yep, yep, and we're going to do it to the whole thing just so that it works, so that if people want to mess with it, because the springs are still good on these. So if when we take this to uh, Herman's typewriter meeting, plug plug, uh, <laughs> we, people want to mess with these tab stops. I don't have to go. Oh no! Don't touch that! Don't. Yeah, if, this machine will be fiddleable with. You yeah, can, you yeah. Can yeah. Play, be able to play with as it as best as possible. I've got this little screwdriver here because you can see. I gotta keep keep my finger out of the picture there. You all don't want to see my fingerprints. Uh, this little end here of the spring is in the way. Well, this is a screwdriver I use to push. That up and over, and keep kept the screwdriver under it, and then was able to snap this tab stop back onto the tab rack there, so that see how it would yeah, work. Yeah, we'll put all of them back on that way, and then feed the shaft back through. That's your that's the quick and easy way to to do that. I don't, have we showed the bearings on this yet, and talked about the? That's the one impressive thing about this. It's a lot like uh, we pointed we, out, I think, on the uh, what was that? I, I Not don't the remember. Harris. We we looked at a design like this with a, a roller bearing cage, yeah, and yeah. a this, uh, separate this, bar. This typewriter is is really pretty interesting. There there are at the same time as there are parts on this machine that are just ghastly. There are parts on this machine that are just kind of brilliant, and uh, the, this removable carriage is is pretty pretty well done. Yeah. The, yeah. The bearing surface is pretty well done. It yeah, removes it, quickly with two thumb screws that are up under the deck. Yeah. Uh, you did have to throw, there's a lever, we'll show that in a later video. Uh, hopefully we'll show it in a later video. To lock the uh, escapement when you remove the carriage. And right. uh, it's it's pretty clever. Yeah, it comes right off. And it this the carriage moves very smoothly on this, on this kind of bearing. I mean, it, that's an excellent design. Yeah, that's moving really smoothly. We've done nothing to that at no, all. No, I mean, absolutely it, nothing. It's in the same rusted barn fine condition. And that carriage moves as smoothly as you could possibly as, yeah. a, as a brand new typewriter. Yeah, so maybe that's uh, luck of the draw or just it's, it's the best part of a bad typewriter or yeah, however yeah. you want to. However you want to look at it, but it certainly is. Uh, it, this machine is an unending fascination. Uh, to me, if you want to move here, unending fascination to me because it, uh, like I said, it incorporates so many good and bad parts at the same time, uh, and we'll show some others of those. The uh, 
escapement is particularly novel, as yep. is the spring all in one housing under mm -hmm. the cast uh, top deck. And uh, like I said, we will have this at Herman's, and it's my understanding that there are, uh, there's only uh, 13 of these or 14 in the world mm -hmm. uh, that have survived, and three of them are going to be there. So right. hopefully we won't reach critical mass and have a gigantic <laughs> time-space energy explosion. explosion. Uh, <laughs> three if, if so, three you'll read about place. us on the news. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> if not, you'll, you'll see video shot from there comparing the machines. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah. So that, that's about it for now. We'll talk to you again soon.